Today we will follow the story of Banaza, an ordinary merchant who was summoned in another world by a kingdom full of magic that summons hundreds of heroes from other worlds to find a legendary hero who can fight against the Demon King's army. But they discover that Banaza was just an ordinary man and by a mistake they are unable to send him back and now he is forced to have a new life in world where he was rejected and abandoned in a forest by a cruel king who just wanted to get rid of this. Failure who actually possesses the powers of a god level. And in order not to let the anime flop you just need to leave your subscription and don't forget to like and comment a lot to win your own ice guy but let's go to the video. In a certain kingdom, many people mistreated the demi-humans, unlike Banaza who paid for their lunch while listening to some mean comments and wondered if they couldn't all get along without caring if they were human or demi-human and her companion replies that few people thought this way. But Banaza begins to glow and wonders what was going on and disappears leaving the girl without understanding anything. While he thought he didn't know why he was chosen and just knew that he was in another world where a man warns him that the summoning number 198 for a candidate for great hero had been a success and welcomes him to the magical kingdom of Clyrode leaving the boy confused since he was just a merchant and the man explains that they summon potential heroes from other worlds so that they can help in the battle against the demon lord and now they would evaluate his skills. Then a demi-human asks him to put his hand on a sphere and explains that the candidates received blessings from the gods in exchange for returning to level 1 when they were summoned and then a screen shows his stats that make the demi-human terrified because he had strength 9, defense 8, speed 6, magic 1, HP 10 and the arithmetic skills and business notion which made him an ordinary human who did not possess no divine revelation leaving everyone disappointed and so Banaza asks if they could send him back. But by his side a great hero had just appeared who possessed all the stats at level 999 even without any skills, leaving everyone in a frenzy so much that they forget about Banaza while the hero found himself and even met with the king and a while later Banaza is frustrated that no one listens to him and wonders if this really would be another world, but anyway he needed to return home. And the next day he gets into a chariot and remembers when he spoke to the king and a wizard explained that by a mistake of theirs they could not send him back since the portal he came from had already been closed and could not be opened again and as it was a mistake of the kingdom they were going to allow him to live in the De La Visa forest to the north and live his life there but he was forbidden to talk about this mistake with anyone. And a while later, Banaza tries to talk to the charioteer who warns him that he was forbidden to talk to him, but he insists since he came from a distant place and didn't know anything about this country, so he hoped that he could tell him some things and asks if he had a servant packed with the king, which was common in his old world. But the demi-human laughs because he really came from a horrible place since in this country it didn't matter if you were human or demi-human making Banaza. Embarrassed so he asks about the forest they were going to but the demi-human cuts off the conversation and Banaza thinks that maybe this new world isn't so bad after all. And after 20 days they arrive in the forest where the wagoner gives him a magic bag that the king had left for him and must have some important items so that he can stay for a while and before going he recommends that he run away from there if he wants to stay alive since it was rumored that the demon lord's army was in the forest and after he left. Banaza decides to look at the items in the bag, after all he didn't know anything about this world, so he wouldn't know where to run, but at least the magic bag worked just like his old one, and when he takes a sword out of it, he notices that it was of very poor quality and was just beautiful and listens to some slimes, but he doesn't get scared since they also existed in his old world and weren't violent. So they wouldn't go he attacks him, but they leap towards him and he manages to defend himself despite the sword breaking. But thanks to this he levels up and gets confused by this strange symbol in his stats and in addition, he also gains the voice guidance that makes him happy since he wanted someone to talk to and the guidance warns him that he has acquired several spells thanks to the level increase leaving him confused. But the voice warns him about a monster tracking and attraction spell in addition to the forced recovery he had in his magic bag and makes him realize that this was the reason the slimes attacked him and he definitely wanted to make sure he loses his life soon, since they even gave him a useless sword and the voice asks if he would like to remove the spell leaving Banaza, surprised that it was so easy, but he decides not to think about it and goes to the forest, since he needed to choose a safe place, but the voice he warns him that the forest was contaminated with a high concentration of militium that was emitted by demons and was very dangerous to humans and asks if he should purify the area and of course Banaza agrees since he would have to live in this place, but before the voice warns that the spell would consume a third of his magic, and he agrees since he believed he had little mana, but a huge magic circle appears along to a mega flash and purifies the forest as he wondered what this had been, but voice again warns that he has leveled up and continues to warn several times. 
But in the meantime the princess was telling the king that what he had done was cruel and the would-be great hero could not return to his world by a mistake of theirs, and now he had sent him to the forest where they said that the demon lord's army had set up a frontline base. But the king says that he was just a useless boy. But a wizard interrupts them and warns them that they have found evidence that the highest holy magic called purification had been used, leaving the king impressed, because surely it would be the thing of the great golden-haired hero, who must have used it and did not believe that he had already achieved sacred magic but he expected no less from the man he himself had chosen. But the wizard warns him that in fact the magic came from the direction contrary to that of the hero and came from the forest della Visa, leaving everyone surprised. But we go back to Banaza, who reaches level 367 even without defeating any monster. But maybe he just needs to use magic to level up and still doesn't understand that infinity symbol in his stats and wonders how much mana he still had and another screen shows his mana restoring itself in seconds, making him think his magic ability must be really low since he restored so fast. But he leaves it aside since he needed to decide what he would do next, since he was forbidden to live in the city and they. Voice suggests that he use the spell change of appearance and Banaza becomes a beautiful waifu and is embarrassed, but decides to change to male since he would have to live in this body and now he could go to the city without being recognized and the voice recommends the teleportation magic to go to the capital and Banazar agree. And he is impressed when he arrives in the city, since in his old world only powerful mages could use this, but maybe here it would be different and he tries to use it to return to his world, but ends up failing, which does not surprise him, but now he changes his focus since he needed to earn money so that he can live in this new world, he wonders if they had a guild of merchants, but he doubted he could register since he didn't know anyone so it would be better to find an adventurer's guild to do some quests. So the voice directs him to the adventurer's guild, where the receptionist explains that the adventurer's ratings were made based on what they accomplished, and as they evolved they earned better rewards and could accept more difficult missions, and he thinks that the guild worked the same as in his old world. So he decides to register and gets nervous when he almost says his real name and introduces himself as Fleo, the name of a puppy he had, and then the receptionist finishes his registration and hands over a medal that had his information on it. And now he could search for a mission. But he notices a little girl who was asking the adventurers to take her to the forest de la Visa, but everyone ignored her since no one wanted to go to the place where they said the Lord's army was, but Banaza offers to help her and luckily, he has already been there so, if they use the teleport magic it would be fast, but that leaves everyone impressed because it was obvious that this kid couldn't use it and Banaza wonders if this wasn't a spell for beginners since it consumed almost no mana. And then a swordswoman arrives who introduces herself as Balarasa of the Royal Knights and orders him not to approach the girl anymore, he didn't look like a sorcerer skilled enough to use such an advanced spell, and the other girls question what he intended to do with the little girl leaving Banaza distressed, since he didn't want the people of the castle to keep an eye on him, so he needed to dispel these suspicions, so he suggests let them accompany them and the knights agree, and go to a place where they wouldn't attract attention and warn him not to do anything suspicious and Banaza agrees, and then uses teleport magic, leaving them not believing that it was possible, but they really were in the forest de la Visa and the mage questions if he would be a great sorcerer since he had used a teleportation spell at such a great distance and he replies that he was just a novice adventurer, who could use a little magic and Balarasa apologizes for being rude to him, but he says that it was okay for him if the suspicions have been undone. While the little girl asked how it was possible that the dense layer of militium in the forest had disappeared and moreover, she did not feel the presence of any magical beast and Banaza tries to explain that he has purified the area, but the voice stops him and warns him to be cautious, since it would be dangerous to inform a demon that he used the purification. And then Balarasa draws his sword and apologizes for having involved him in this and points his blade at the little girl and tells her to show her true form making Banaza even more confused while Balarasa said that the guild issued a warning about a young suspect who recently appeared asking for help to travel to the forest where the demon lord's army was located ea the little girl completely changes her expression and says that these nights they were really brave to talk to her like that and begins to transform leaving everyone scared and she introduces herself as Fenris. Fengerly's younger sister of the four infernals and orders them to repent leaving Balarasa distressed for being a wolf and Fenris says that her brother had sent her to observe the enemy and find food, but still they would lose their lives. Then she emits a high amount of militium that makes the knights go to the ground and Banaza tries to help the girl leaving the demon impressed that one of them was not affected by the militium, so he was supposed to be a bit tough, but as soon as she finished with the rest she would face him so she attacks Balarasa, but Banaza saves her and Fenris warns that the Lupins never let their prey escape and Banaza decides to use his teleportation magic to send the girls back to the city since he couldn't run away or protect them and Fenris goes back to attack them, 
but the girls are teleported and she questions what he intended to do now, that they were alone and Banaza, thinks he still didn't know why he was chosen, but refused to lose his life before he had done anything in this world, so he would test all the his spells against her. Banaza engages in combat against Fenris and uses his gravity magic to trap the girl to the ground, while he thinks how he could restrain her, and the system suggests the subjugation spell, so that he can control the girl's thoughts and actions, something he refused to do while Fenris tried to use various spells, but all were denied, while the system insisted that he use the spell. But the girl's mana runs out and Fenris, he ends up surrendering and accepts that this would be his end. But Banaza says he wouldn't do it. After all, he didn't even like to fight. He withdraws his magic leaving the girl confused after all she was a demon, and even so he wanted to let her live and Banaza says he didn't care who was human or demon, he just didn't want to eliminate someone who had surrendered leaving the girl surprised, and so she calls him naive and goes back to his demi-human form, leaving the boy embarrassed to sail without clothes he runs to dress her and says that if she promised that she would no longer attack humans, she could go wherever she wanted and starts looking for some clothes in her magic bag, so she ends up falling asleep since she was out of mana. And at night, Banaza remembered her teleportation magic and wondered why she had such powerful magic as Fenris woke up and thought he had incredible magic resistance so much so that she couldn't do anything against him and admits that she thought humans were a fragile race, so she dresses up and asks if he had used healing magic on her while she slept, which was kind of weird since anyone else would have taken the opportunity to remove her skin and so she swears by his name that she would never get into unnecessary conflicts with humans again and besides she recognizes him as her master and promises to dedicate her life to pay her debt to him. Leaving the boy awkward as she kept insisting and offering to carry her belongings as a servant or do whatever was ordered since she just wanted to be by her side but Banaza says she didn't need someone to carry cargo and didn't even have any desire to possess someone like this and Fenris makes a prickly dog face but Banaza says that was no use so the girl decides that if she couldn't stay by her side then she didn't deserve to be long live what makes Banaza end up accepting that she accompanies him making the girl very happy and after that he reveals that he was not of this world and was summoned as a candidate for great hero. But he did not possess any ability and they could no longer send him back so he was dropped in this place and used the magic of changing appearance because the people of the castle could be after him and now he didn't know what he should do or where to go and if she accompanied him he would have a difficult life, but Fenris didn't care about that after all. The Lupins lived exclusively for those they recognize as masters and swear allegiance to him without caring who he is or where they would go since he wanted to live by his side until the end of his life. But in the meantime the king asked the hero what had happened for the unit to have been decimated and the hero replies that the soldiers were useless and upon seeing a magical beast they panicked and disbanded the formation but he should be grateful that he did everything in his power to save the survivors and Trezello's back since it was all the fault of the soldiers and retreats while the king asked the one of the soldiers on the other side of the story and it says that the hero stayed in the rear and fled while they fought for their lives and the hero just screamed throwing all the responsibility on them and several soldiers were disgruntled like him who wondered what was going on and even though he had been training for a month none of his skills improved and that way he could only defend himself against humans or weak magical beasts but he would have no chance against beasts with any higher degree of strength but ends up leaving that aside and leaves with his servant to spend the money in the castle but we go back to Banaza who was going to the guild to look for a job since they needed money to survive in this world and Fenris offers to go with his master who is a little uncomfortable to be called that so he suggests that she call him by his name. But a marketer offers his vegetables to his lovely wife making the girl curious and Banaza says that he thought they were married and in the in fact, if people thought they were a couple, it would be easier for them to travel together without looking suspicious, but of course if it was okay for her, but the idea makes the girl very excited because the greatest honor for a wolf was to have a strong husband and she was in disbelief that she was the wife of such a powerful man, but Banaza says it was just to pretend what the girl didn't cared, then calls him darling, making him ashamed. But the two eventually arrive at the guild where Fenris found this gadget that humans used interesting in Banaza, says, it was just like yours and the girl notices that they were matching and says that her race performed a wedding ritual where the couple swallowed some of the bones of a prey they hunted together, and the idea of having a matching accessory, reminded her of this while Banaza wondered if she wouldn't make him swallow, but then the receptionist asks the name of the girl and Fenris. Almost says her real name but Banaza or rather Fleo interrupts her and says that her name was RYS and after registering she apologizes because she had completely forgotten about it, but Banaza was not worried since no one would find out who she really was. 
but the guild receptionist calls everyone's attention since she had an urgent mission and announces that a large group of psycho bears was sighted to the north and was coming to the city leaving everyone distressed because they had rumors that they destroyed the army of the great hero and the girl continues to say that they had no rank requirements for this mission and would pay 10 times the value of each bear's defeat making Banaza admit that it would be very lucrative, but it was better for them to avoid that in Fenry's questions the reason since he could eliminate an army of theirs without any difficulty and Banaza says that he had no chance since not even the great hero could deal with them, and so the girl decides to hunt them alone, because that way she would prove that he was strong since he had defeated her. And the two end up going to the mission together, where there was a house that the guild let them use and Fenry says that she could easily deal with the bears alone. But Banaza couldn't let her do it alone, and besides that she had a spell that she wanted to test making the girl confident, since together, they could defeat even the demon lord. But a scream catches their attention and Banaza remembers that they were the knights from the day before and Fenri suggests that they just ignore those weak people while the girls battled but Banaza uses his lightning magic leaving everyone impressed. But a bear attacks the mage and Fenri saves her and says that he was very nice and the girls recognize Fleo who saved them again and they thank him and Balarosa admits that they were worried about what could have happened to him although they believe that he survived even facing that monster which makes Fenri's upset with the monster part but the girls ask who the girl next to him would be and he introduces her as Arwyas, his traveling companion since they couldn't know who she really was but Arwyas gets upset as she wondered why she didn't have the presented as a wife. And a bear appears behind the girl and tries to attack her, but with just one glance she terrifies him and goes to the ground, giving up fighting, leaving the two of them not understanding anything, but Fleo says they couldn't ignore him and Arwyas suggests that they make him their subordinate, but Fleo corrects her and asks if she didn't mean pet. Leaving the knights in disbelief at what they were hearing while Fleo used a restraint spell so he wouldn't be aggressive again and also uses an appearance change spell to turn him into a cute little creature since they couldn't walk around with a psycho bears and call him SYB while the knights wondered who these people were who annihilated the psycho bears easily and even tamed one of them, but Balarosa says she wanted to ask Fleo for something. Then they go to the house where the girls introduce themselves as the knights Balirosa and Bailarai and the heavy knight Blossom and finally the sorceress Bellano and Balirosa apologize for their presumption and asks if Fleo could train them since the forces led by the great hero ended up being exterminated by the bears which made the hero furious and he locked himself in the fortress and said that he would only lead a force against the demon lord when they found people who could serve as their right-hand man, so the king ordered the knights to dedicate themselves to combat until they could defeat beasts of the level of the psycho bears and as shameful as it is they were still newcomers to the order and not even the four of them together could defeat a single bear and so they wanted his help and Fleo thinks that even he didn't know how he managed to use his spells and wonders how he could teach them how to fight. But notices a heavy aura coming from Arwyas who said that they were a bunch of shameless women and the boy says that he had previously groomed her as his traveling companion, but in fact she was his wife and would just like to live a quiet life with her. Leaving the girl embarrassed while the knights were surprised and apologized because they didn't want to bother them but Arwyas completely changes because she thought it would be a good idea for him to train them in real combat and while she was overjoyed she said that as his wife she knew better than anyone that he was a kind man who did not abandon the needy and as his wife she would accept his decision that's right as his wife what does Fleo do? End up accepting, despite admitting that he wasn't. Very confident that he could teach them, making the girls grateful and eager to start, but they apologize again because there was something else they wanted to ask for and as it was very dangerous to camp outside, they would like him to let them rent this room so they can sleep and of course Arwyas agrees, after all they had enough bedrooms and as they were married they could share a bed embarrassing the boy. But meanwhile, the demon lord was informed that the unit led by Fengerly in the Delaviza forest had been annihilated by a purification spell that had been used by a single person, arousing the demon lord's curiosity about this individual who could use a magic powerful enough to eliminate the demons instantly, so he orders the girl to find him and capture him at any cost. The next day, Banaza is woken up by RyS and remembers the conversation from the night before, when the girl asked him to be kind to her, who offered himself body and soul to him, but Banaza was embarrassed and tried to explain that for this there were still some steps and many feelings involved, which the girl found very complicated, so he decided to sleep in the hallway. But Arwyas reminded him that the knights would find it strange if he did that. Then he had no choice but to share a room with her, who was now trying to help him change his clothes. But Balarosa opens the door and gets it all wrong. And later Balarosa faces a giant boar that runs after her Blossom even tried to help, but his attack had no effect so Arwyas told Bolano to use his magic to defend the girl and Byrally tried to attack with his bow and arrow, and of course the arrow, 
didn't even pierce the creature's skin and the mage ended up running out of mana, so the creature started running after the girls, while Fleo said that maybe this training becomes a little more complicated than you thought. And later Fleo takes the girls to the room where they would stay since the training would take a while, and RYS will let them know that she had finished lunch, and as soon as Fleo looks at the plate he is in shock as she says that she made these big pieces to celebrate the change. But Fleo is a little shy and asks her to make something a little more cooked next time, and offers to take care of it this time and Valorosa decides to help him. And the two prepare the food that leaves everyone amazed with the dishes Fleo even praises Valorosa who had a lot of skill in the kitchen and the girl explains that despite being a noblewoman her family did not have money so they always had to cook for themselves which made her better in the kitchen than with the sword and her food was magnificent but Arwais doubted that since this salad was eaten by herbivores weak but decides to eat. It after all it was the food her husband had prepared but she is surprised by the taste of the salad and the meat that was still juicy even though it was toasted on the outside but she starts to get jealous of Valorosa. And a while later the two go to the guild where everyone was talking about them and Fleo realizes that they had exaggerated a little with that amount of monsters they brought and Arwyas asks his permission to go to the city while he sorted things out and Fleo offers to go along but the girl wanted to go alone because it was something personal but a man interrupts the two and introduces himself as Leolich from the guild of the adventurers and asks to talk to Fleo who agrees and arranges to wait. For the girl in the same place and when he leaves Arwyas looks at a poster with a woman cooking and leaves the guild determined to give it her all. But in the meantime Leolich said that everyone in the city was talking about his exploits and even the palace contacted them to offer him the chance to put his strength at the service of the great hero and if he accepted he would receive the title of honorary knight and in fact they had never seen a pair of adventurers eliminate so many A-rank monsters and so it would be a great opportunity for him in addition to being for the good of the whole world although the guild prefers to keep them in their service, making Fleo think about the benefits to this world, but as someone who came from another world, he had no reason to come into conflict with the demons, so he decides to refuse the offer, leaving Leolich surprised. And finally he leaves the guild and finds Arwyas who was finished, he even asks if she had found a magical beast, but the girl denies it and thinks that she never imagined that cooking was something so complex and remembers her cooking class where the woman said that this way they would all win the hearts of their men, but it all went wrong for her, who refused to be defeated by this human custom. And during the night, the great hero discovers that the guild has found a duo capable of defeating an incredible number of magical beasts single-handedly and orders them to bring them to him, who would be happy to put them at his service. But Fleo kept denying the palace's request for a month and this insistence started to bother Arwyas who wanted to fix it but Fleo doesn't let it, after all it was just their job and besides they had to help the girls in training. But she is surprised that Blossom has revived their vegetable garden and meanwhile Arwyas told Byerly to start practicing on the creatures of the forest since shooting at a target standing still wouldn't help her progress and then Fleo gives a magic ring to Bolano that would increase her mana and when he leaves the girl tries to change the finger ring but of course Arwyas comes up behind her and tells her not to even think about putting it on the ring but they are interrupted by Balarosa who was being attacked by a slug and asked for Fleo's help but Arwyas solves it quickly and sends her stop playing the damsel in distress since she was now able to defeat C-rank monsters easily and was too bold to play the weak one to get her husband's attention but she ends up noticing someone spying on them. And later RYS prepares a feast for everyone who is impressed with her evolution in the kitchen and Fleo compliments her, and asks her how she learned all this and she says that she started attending cooking classes, while accompanying him to the guild, and at first she thought it was only hard work and could be done with magic, but over time things were changing and life was really strange since in the old days she lived for combat. But now she was happier learning new things than getting stronger. And she had even prepared a special dish for Fleo, who was impressed with its delicious flavor making her very happy. While the demon's envoy confirmed that this really would be Fenris, the demon lord's most formidable warrior and wonders what had happened to her to be surrounded by humans. But behind her comes Fenris who questions what Yuliminas was doing there, leaving the girl terrified. And she has no way out but to enter the house and have a cup of tea with the two of them. But Fenris questions why the demon lord's assistant is visiting them and she replies that she just came to observe the surroundings and saw her by chance and Fenris says that she was now living in this place with her husband leaving Yuliminas suppressed, while noticing that Fenris looked like someone else and by the way, 
Who was this human who didn't stay with her? Fear the presence of two demons and the worst of all would be that her evaluation spell didn't work with him, and so she didn't have any information, but the strangest thing was that this didn't happen even with the demon lord and she says that the environment of the place had changed a lot and there was no more magical beast in the forest of Delavisa and Fleo says that if there was no more beast in the place than his purification spell had worked leaving Eliminus surprised that he was the one who cast the spell and wonders if Fenris knew about it and because of that spell his brother Fengarir had lost his life as well as the troops that accompanied him leaving Fleo distressed, but Fenris tells her to shut up and the boy asks if it would be true what he had done to his brother and Fenris replies that few humans were able to cast a purification spell, so she had suspected, but her brother was a wolf warrior so she would probably hate that people mourned her fate after all she wasn't. Able to do anything so she was the only one to blame and had chosen her husband as a master, because she admired his strength and nothing would change her feelings for him, but Fleo realizes that the knights were listening to everything and the girls apologize for it, and they didn't imagine that RYS would be that Fenris and Eliminas notices that this man was a threat to the demon lord's army. So Fenris also became an enemy and so she asks if Fleo would accept a training duel against her, since she was curious to see the strength of the one chosen by Fenris. But in fact she wanted to eliminate both of them at the same time. But Fenris warns that this friendly fight was a trap and the two get into a little argument. But Fleo accepts the fight that was worth anything and would end when someone gave up and Eliminas starts his poison claw attack. But this was just to get attention since the real attack came from below and would hit both of them. But Fleo cancels her two spells leaving her impressed as he activates another spell that prevents her movements and says that he was the one who was her opponent and would not allow her to attack Arwyas but the girl eventually gives up. And the next day Fleo and Arwyas talk to the knights and he says that he thought it would be bad if they found out who Arwyas really was and it was okay if they want to notify the castle but first Arwyas says she swore allegiance to her husband and no longer belonged to the demon lord's army and Balarosa says that it was their duty as knights to warn the castle but not if the person has no bad intentions and Blossom says that they talked. At night and for a month Arwyas accompanied them in training and they owed a debt of gratitude to her and no matter how useless they were they would never report someone who helped them leaving them both grateful. But Arwyas notices something wrong and as they leave they come across Eliminas and an army of dragons. She thanks them for the reception the night before and in return brought the demon lord's legion of dragons, leaving the knights terrified because they decimated several human battalions and Eliminas says he would spare them if he swore allegiance to the demon lord. But Fleo was only excited because it was the first time he saw a dragon since in his old world he only saw the scales used in rare objects, leaving Eliminas because he wasn't worried and orders the dragons to attack. But Fleo uses his divine hammer holy magic and decimates several dragons as if they were nothing, leaving the girl in disbelief and the dragons that survived end up leaving the girl behind as they run away. And Blossom commends that if she knew she had swung her hoe and if she was lucky she could have the title Dragon Slayer and would level up, so Fleo suggests that she try to throw her hoe and uses some spells to upgrade the weapon and with that the hoe eliminates one of the dragons and the girl is surprised to win the title and the other girls ask to try too but the dragons had already run away. And all the while the demon lord watched them and was surprised that this human wasn't the great hero and yet used spells of that kind and so he would make the next move. Fleo erects a barrier and now he could know if any demon invades the territory, which makes Arwyas happy because then he would put that noisy cat to run and gets annoyed just remembering her, but Fleo asks her to calm down and the girl says that he was very nice for letting her go after that attack. But the boy replies that he hadn't done it out of kindness and is thoughtful when remembering her saying that he had taken the life of Arwyas's brother but the girl calls him to return home. And all the while, Blossom admired her new title, not believing that she had achieved it with a hoe, but Balarosa leaves them alone and says that she was going to hunt magical beasts, leaving the girls impressed with her rigorous training every day and are determined to give it their all. But in fact Balarosa also desired that title, since even a commoner could become a nobleman with acquired prestige, and it was the dream of every adventurer, and if he had not been late he could have restored the greatness of his family, and they would have returned to the capital, as when his father was a knight. But a man approaches her and says that he heard that a well-known person lived in this area. So he came to look for her and asks if she knew something. But Balarosa wonders why he is carrying little equipment in this forest full of monsters and replies that he knew and holds his sword and kept saying that he must be talking about Fleo or his wife and the man replies that he was known to his wife and so Balarosa draws her sword and points it at the man and asks if he belonged to the demon lords. Army in questions what he wanted with someone who left the army and depending on his answer he would have to deal with her, then the man says that she was right about him being from the demon lords army. 
but just came to see how Fenry's was and would like her to tell her how about we talk about the old days, while we had tea, since it was better for him to leave and Ballarosa decides not to face him and says that she would deliver his message she even introduces herself and asks his name and the man replies that his name was Gozel. And soon after Fleo comes running worried about Ballarosa and she replies that everything was fine and a certain Gozel from the Demon Lord's army had just passed by and Arwyas says that that man was hopeless and they had better fake names that he could have used and Fleo explains that they received a warning from the barrier and came to look and was surprised to sail talking to someone with the title Lord Demon leaving the girl terrified while. Fenry said that his name was actually Goland. Ballarosa is desperate that she pointed her sword at the real demon lord and she was sure to lose her life. But the next day the demon goes to visit them and Fleo introduces himself and invites him in while Gol thought that this human showed no sign of fear in his presence, but Ballarosa opens the door of the laundry room and comes face to face with the demon and is in shock. But they go to the room where Gol says that a few days ago they dealt with a subordinate of his while Ballarosa wondered why she had to be there and why she was on his side and Arwyas asks the reason for his visit and if he came to retaliate but the demon goes straight to the point and asks if Fleo wanted to join his army but the boy denies and thanks her proposal and the demon says that he believed that the king of Clyrode must be desperate for his power and asks why he doesn't serve the king and still lives in hiding and Fleo replies that he didn't see any reason to support humans just because he was one of them and besides he wasn't of this world and you didn't even know why they were at war and the demon asks if no one had explained it and Arwyas replies that her husband had no interest in getting into conflicts, so he didn't see any reason to talk about it, which Gol agrees made sense. But he explains that now there shouldn't be people who understand this since this war between. Humans and Demons goes back 500 years since the appearance of the first Demon Lord, who was a stranger from another world and wanted to rule this one, and the Demons accepted him. Since at the time they were oppressed by humans and so the war started and the longer it went on the more the conflicts increased making it difficult to be stopped easily and Fleo asks if the Demon wanted to end the war and he replies that mentalities have changed a lot over the 12 generations and he had no desire to take over the world but the devil begins to emanate his miasma while saying that even so he still continued to be the demon king and couldn't just ignore a potential threat that could ally with his enemies, but Fleo kept smiling while Ballarosa was panicking and the demon says that Fleo wouldn't regret it, so he should join them. But the boy replies that he was overestimating him and had already said that he didn't intend to choose either side, making the demon laugh after dispelling his. Miasma and admits that he liked it of his obstinacy and it must have been how he refused the king's offers leaving Fleo happy that he was a person who knew how to talk but the demon replies that this did not mean that he had given up and soon he would return and thinks that it was not only Fleo that caught his attention and was surprised that this human remained impassive in his presence and really was an interesting woman and after he goes although the girls go up to Ballarosa who was standing there with a smile but in fact she was in a state of shock wondering why she had to go through this. And the next day she wakes up in her bed, after all she had lost consciousness after that and when she gets to the kitchen she comes across the demon king who admits that Fenris's food was delicious, but Fenris tells him to leave as soon as it's over, since her husband wouldn't change his mind and the demon calls the girl to come to the table. But she says that her clothes were inappropriate and leaves thin as the demon said she had a graceful manner. And as the days went by, the demon kept visiting the house because he wanted to talk to Ballarosa, but the girl kept running away from him and making excuses, while he thought she was too hardworking, but a soldier watched everything, and warns the king that a demon was seen in that adventurer's house and regularly transited through the place going from the house to the territory of the demons, leaving the king enraged and he wonders, how that adventurer dared to ignore three of his summons, and still ally himself with a demon lord's army, and so orders them to send soldiers. But the princess asks him to wait because none of this proved that he formed an alliance with the demons, and if he sent the soldiers he could off Fleo and make him join the demon lord, so it would be better for them to prioritize the dialogue and it shouldn't just be a summon since they needed to hear what he had to say. But the king tells the girl to shut up because it wasn't with these naive ideas that you ruled a country, and then the great hero comes and tells him to give you soldiers, because if he did not obey willingly, then it was enough to use force. But meanwhile in the demon lord's castle Eulimenes said that it was dangerous for the demon lord to go alone. But he says that Fleo was a man who knew how to talk. Unlike that king of the humans who did not listen to anyone and it would not be a waste of time if a conciliation is possible. But the girl says that everyone was waiting for his orders and he replies that he was still thinking about when to launch the attack and Eulimenes thinks that there were many who were beginning to criticize him. For visiting this human so much and wonders if he was worth so much for this attempt at conciliation. 
And at home RYS asked what Fleo was doing and he says that he wanted to sell defense equipment with the dragon scales, and still needed to do some experiments since he wanted to be successful with sales to continue living there. Which arouses the curiosity of RYS who asks if he was sure he wanted to do this, because if he agreed to work for the great hero, he would earn an absurd amount of money, and it would be an opportunity to make good use of his power and questions if it was because of him. That he refused to face the demon lord's army, but the boy denies it and she says that as he was a good person, she thought he was being considerate of her, but Fleo explains that he was not the good person she imagined and he just understood that he had great powers and so he preferred to avoid any form of conflict and RYS says that's why he was a good person and that was one of the reasons she admired him. But someone knocks on the door and they even think it would be Gozel, but in fact it was the great hero who was with an army and said that he knew that he was in contact with the demon lord's army, but would let him choose between subordinating himself to him against the demon lord or losing his life in this place for being considered an ally of the demons and the hero thinks that for sure this scene was in his top three best moments of his life and wonders if his charisma had affected him and left him speechless and he couldn't blame him because he was going to become a real hero who would leave his name in history and all he needed was to make him obey him and send him to defeat the demon lord but Fleo replies that this was a problem and didn't want any of the options leaving the hero surprised while Fleo he kept saying that he was sorry since so many people had the trouble to come to him that he did not intend to join the demon lord or them. So the hero asks if he had chosen to have his life taken and Beryl Erosa says that this was tyranny and they should listen to his side that he was not a traitor to the nation. But the hero replies that he knew that there were others who accompanied him and also could arrest them as traitors or you could set them free in exchange for cooperating to convince this man. Leaving Fleo serious because he had no other choice and didn't want to cause problems for Balarosa and her friends, and as he didn't want to choose a side or get a conflict in this place, he decided to go to another place and asks what RYS thought and the girl replies that she would accompany him and the knights ask them to let them accompany them, because since their childhood they were taught that the demons should be eliminated. But they began to doubting this after they started living with the two and were questioning if facing the demons was really something right and besides that. Balarosa believed that he would be embarrassing his father if he served someone who threatened an innocent and all the girls agreed, while the hero questioned what they were saying because they would never escape this siege. But Fleo had already made up his mind and uses his teleport magic to send they all join the house and the plantation to another location, while the hero questioned how he could use a spell that even he couldn't use, leaving everyone impressed that everything has disappeared. But one of the soldiers warns that the demon that was in contact with Fleo had arrived and the hero orders them to capture him. But Gol is surprised that there is nothing else in the place and understands that they were responsible for this which aroused his fury, and he says that they did not understand the stupid thing they had done and orders all the demons and their entire army gather to attack the magical kingdom of Clyrode and should show them the power of the demons and Eulimina's asks if everyone heard the voice of the demon lord and the order to attack had been given then the statues begin to move and darkness begins to take over the place causing the hero to run in fear. But in the meantime Fleo arrived at another location leaving everyone impressed because now they were west of the capital and this was the city where he came to sell the materials taken from the dragons and there they would be hidden from the great hero and the demon lord which makes Balarosa calm despite Blossom saying that he had liked her a lot and Fleo apologizes to RYS for involving her in so much trouble but she replies. That nothing like that it was his fault and besides she was ready to follow him anywhere so they could be together after all she was his wife. The demons begin their attacks and the king receives the report that almost all the lines of defense had already been destroyed while the great hero was secluded in the fortress, leaving the king with no way but to gather all the mages in the country to invoke the purification spell that would bring consequences. While a servant of the demon king said that the moment was approaching, but he ordered everyone to retreat as the humans were going to cast the purification magic. And meanwhile several mages, including the king, activated the magic that wipes out all militium in the region. But in the meantime Fleo was greeted by RYS who was happy in fleece and asks if he wanted his meal or a good bath. But maybe he might prefer something else but Fleo says that it was better for them to go eat and the girl asks if he had already found a good place to do business. But Fleo denies it and as the city had several stores he decided to look at their values to get an idea of the price of the equipment and Blossom says that he was thinking of selling the vegetables they had since he didn't want to be without giving anything in return and Byerly also wanted to help and thought that it would be a good idea for them to start breeding horses because then they could rent them and it could generate a good income leaving the mage and Balarosa frustrated because they didn't have any income but RYS consoles them after all it was not a problem to take care of them since that was her role as the pack leader's wife and Fleo asks them not to worry because they could split the household. 
chores while they continue with the training. And in the kingdom one of the advisors said that the purification spell managed to make the demons retreat and the effect of the spell should last about three months, so the demons would not be able to approach the purified area. But because of the spell the mages were bedridden, since they used all the mana and at best they would recover in two or three months, and this included the king who was also one of the country's wizards. Then, according to the laws, the princess would assume his role. Until he recovers, and as a first order she decides to remove the great hero from his position, as he remained cloistered while the kingdom was in danger, leaving everyone curious about how they would face the demon lord. They question if the princess intended to summon more hero candidates, but she denies it, since they had no wizards to do so. That and ask them to call the prophetess. And the hero can't believe he was being dismissed, after all he was the great hero chosen by the king. But the soldier turns his back on him, who says he wouldn't forgive them and they would surely beg for his help when the demon lord attacked again. And during the night Fleo asks if Ryas had ever slept but the girl was still awake and he starts talking about her seemed excited to be a part of everything, since they had moved in and she says that if it is for her husband, she would do anything and Fleo admits that for a long time he wanted to say that he was grateful to her since it must be difficult to adapt to human habits, so that he is thankful but the girl ends up falling asleep and he thinks that when he was brought into this world he was without anyone and was unsure about what was going to happen, but he found work and even a house in a short time, but if he was alone he could not feel as peaceful as he was now. And the next day, the knights suggest that Fleo and Ryas go on a date, since the weather was nice and they didn't have to worry because they would take care of everything in the house, making Ryas extremely excited. Because now the two could enjoy the day together and Fleo asks if there would be something that Ryas wanted because he wanted to give her a gift making her even happier then Ryas starts to look at several things while having fun until they arrive at a woman who sold natural stones or one of them catches the attention of Fleo who says that she had looked beautiful with her but ends up being embarrassed and the girl thanks you for the gift. And finally they return to the house where Ryas was all silly with her gift, the girls even wonder what had happened but are happy that they enjoyed the ride despite being a little jealous. And later Ryas ends up falling asleep with Fleo who is embarrassed, but he lays her down next to him after all she must have been very tired, but the girl hugs him and he can't sleep. But let's go to the hero who invades the treasure room while complaining that they took advantage of the king's absence to expel him and the girl asks what the great hero would do now and he questions why she still calls him that and the girl replies that he has not yet given up his title so if he returns to his position it would be okay to continue serving him making him agree after all he refused to live as one commoner and surely this room would have some secret treasure to defeat the demon lord and will make him be praised as a hero for the rest of his life and wonders how the hero chosen by the king could not master the spell that man used but that would solve itself if he had more power then a voice echoes in his head and asks if he wished he could, leaving the hero confused, but the voice keeps saying that if he wishes, he should free her, then a secret door opens before them and if he takes that sword from the base, it would grant any wish of his, but the hero is unsure and the voice questions if he had been scared, making the hero deny it. He pulls the sword from the base and says that he didn't care who she was but wanted her to work for him. And a gale throws him away and a woman appears before them and introduces herself as H.Y., a jinn who controlled the light and darkness of the origin and asks if he was the one who broke his imprisonment and he confirms after all it was the great hero who had freed her, so H.I.Y. grants him three wishes and the hero decides to start asking. But first let's go to the princess who thanks Ursula for coming so quickly and the prophetess says that the situation must be serious, so that the princess needs her help and the princess says that the country was protected by a purification spell and they should act before the effect of the magic is undone, and so she wanted to know what to do next to save the kingdom. But a collar appears around everyone's neck, leaving the princess distressed, since she knew what it was about, and orders them to capture the invaders of the treasure room, and the prophetess says that this was the necklace to take off heads, and it was used by the sacrifices offered to a certain jinn in exchange for the fulfillment of a wish -y. The princess reveals that in the past a king wished for the elimination of the demon lord, but in return it was after that, many mages lost their lives while uniting to seal the jinn, but it seems that someone freed her and made a wish and the time that was left for them was until she fulfilled the wish and so she asks Ursula to try to see what they should do to overcome this crisis. Then the prophetess uses her cards and reveals that she needed to search for the true great hero who has already been summoned, making everyone think that it would be the adventurer that the king was trying to recruit and his name was Fleo and Ursula says that he was on the west side, then one of the advisors asks them to send soldiers to search the cities. But the princess denies it because they could not divide the forces that protect the kingdom, so she would go personally behind him. And while Fleo was trying to negotiate with a blacksmith for the sale of a shield leaving him impressed with the dragon scales. 
He questions if he was the same one who brought the dragon meat to the butcher shop and Fleo confirms after all he had a secret source of this material making the man agree to the purchase and asks him to bring more goods from his secret contact making Fleo agree to bring more equipment and he asks if the man knew merchants interested in buying magic beast leather and says he has moved recently then he was looking for places to supply goods and would be grateful if he could introduce them and the blacksmith admits that he wanted to buy everything but agrees to introduce some people. And meanwhile Balarosa was impressed because in addition to Fleo having made a magnificent shield he was able to negotiate and even established a sales route by himself and Ryas who was wearing the brooch he gave her says that she knew that before he came here he was a merchant and with Sertava he did great jobs and Balarosa admits that he was jealous of Ryas for marrying Fleo and Ryas says that it was not for him she thought about it in a very friendly way while Balarosa tried to explain herself. Because she just wanted to find someone like him, which makes Ryas feel more relaxed by saying that she already had a very competent man available who would be Gozel who seemed to have liked her very much, but Balarosa is a little scared to think that the demon lord had liked her. Then Fleo leaves the shop and was happy to have sold the shield for a higher price than expected, he pleases Balarosa for having shown this shop after all she had already come to it when she was a knight. They decide to leave and Ryas says that Fleo seemed to be having fun during the negotiations and he admits that he liked it since he was formerly a merchant so he got along well with this kind of work but Ryas says that she was happy to see him evolving in his work but was a little sad to spend less time with him and it could be from time to time but she wanted to go hunting or spend time with him just like last time and Fleo agrees with her. But an alert warns that a jinn was approaching and Hiy appears behind him Ryas questions who she would be and the jinn introduces herself and asks if that would be Fleo who questions what she wanted with him and finally it is revealed that the first wish of the great hero would be that the jinn eliminate the criminal who dared to humiliate him and who was called Fleo and Hiy says that he came to fulfill a wish but Ryas tells Fleo to step aside and puts himself in front of him despite his automatic defense being activated, but Ryas ends up receiving the blow from Jin that pierces the girl's chest leaving Fleo distressed by the girl who asks him to run away, Hiy attacks them again, but Fleo's defense stops his spells while he called for Ryas, but Hiy realizes that his ordinary spells had no effect on the boy. So he decides to use another spell while Fleo tries use his healing magic on Ryas, but it is nullified and he is warned that. The girl's wound exceeded the level of this magic and there was no other magic that could replace the healing one, making Fleo wonder why that is, so Jin uses his light magic against the boy, generating a mega impact but is surprised to see that he was still unharmed and Fleo learns his magic Balarosa gets worried about Ryas and Fleo realizes that the girl no longer had life and says that she would pay for it, he lays Ryas on the ground and gets up in a rage and goes back to saying that she would pay for what she had done. And after Ryas had his life taken away, Flio remembers several moments with a girl from the day, she stayed by his side after he was thrown alone into this world, and never imagined that she would be so happy when he suggested a fake marriage to avoid a master-servant relationship, and because of her fault Fenris lost her brother and was left alone. But even so, she continued to love him and for him, that he felt that protecting her would be his role in this world, and even then he ended up failing and was determined to make Hiya pay for what he had done. But first he activates a magic that makes Ryas's time go backwards until the the girl is fully healed, leaving the jinn not understanding how a human could use magic that made time go back and questions who he would be. But Fleo punches the girl who asks how he dared to punch someone who has mastered all the magic in the world, but he tells her to shut up and keeps hitting the jinn and nullifying his magic. She wonders what he was and with her evaluation magic she discovers that Fleo possessed infinite abilities, which was impossible and rendered her defense spells useless. And finally Ryas wakes up and doesn't understand how she was without any scratches and Balarosa explains that it must be because of Fleo's magic that she was beating up the jinn without any mercy making Ryas emotional that her husband was being so cruel because of her and it was surprising since physical attacks shouldn't work against a jinn that was capable of using all the spells. But she remembers when he told her that he didn't want to take her life, after all he didn't like fighting and didn't want to eliminate someone who had surrendered and starts to get distressed because this was happening because of him. Fleo continues his massacre against the jinn who begged him to spare her, but he doesn't care about the girl, after all she had hurt Ryas. Fleo was determined to end Jin but Ryas runs up to him and hugs him and tells him that he couldn't do it and admits that she was lucky that he was angry about what had happened to her but remembers when he left her alive because he didn't want to eliminate someone who had surrendered and while crying she said that she would be sad for him to lose that kindness making Fleo regain consciousness and he is thrilled to realize that she was fine. 
But in the meantime, the princess and some guards use teleportation magic to search for the true great hero, and she asks them to prioritize the rest of the mages who had just recovered some mana. But their necklaces break and the princess is surprised because this meant that Jin couldn't get her wish. And we go back to the great hero who was locked in the treasure room while the guards ordered the miscreant to leave while the hero thought that Jin had lied about making his wish come true. But a voice questions who would have imagined that the Jin could have failed and from the base of the sword comes a mist that surrounds the girl making her almost faint and leaves the hero worried about TSUI. But the girl says that this was his first body of flesh in hundreds of years, although this outfit is horrible. So he uses a magic to change them, leaving the hero surprised and the girl thanks him for freeing the Jin that bothered her and for that reason she had managed to escape and as a way of thanking her, Damal Yunas, the great midnight mage, would give him the power he desired. In place of that Jin and transforms the great hero into a creature who destroys the treasure room while the girl laughed because that was better than that slap face he had and now she could take revenge on the nobles who sealed her and when she realized that a teleportation circle had been broken she decides to go after the princess since she wouldn't let the royalty that sealed her escape and didn't care which generation the girl would be for. And we go back to Fleo who finishes healing the Jin who begs for her forgiveness and questions why she was cured but Fleo says it would be because RYS was okay and Balarosa asks what they would do with the girl since she was too much for the night so Fleo suggests that they seal her again in the treasure room of the castle making Jin curious about how he knew this so Fleo explains that for some reason he had more spells and as he wanted to know why they were attacked he looked in his mind leaving the girl surprised since this memory projection magic was something that only she could use and Fleo Leo keeps saying that she granted wishes in exchange for a very high cost and if he returned her to the castle this incident could be repeated. But this gets RYS excited since the solution was simple and as of today Jin was supposed to be her husband's servant and was aware that he didn't want a servant but they couldn't trust the castle to take care of her so it would be better to keep her around to keep an eye on and besides having a powerful Jin in the pack would be great making Fleo realize that her persuasion had increased despite her having let her sincerity slip away leaving the girl embarrassed while saying that having a strong pack wasn't everything but it wasn't a bad thing and Fleo questions if she really was okay with it since the this woman had hurt her and RYS admits that she was frustrated since her lack of strength made her come out on top and how it was okay for her. Fleo decides not to be enraged by the djinn and extends the hand to the girl and if she promised that she would no longer take someone's life and take her hand he would forgive her leaving the girl intrigued because he thought that because. Humans do not separate themselves from hatred and obsessions they were capable of sacrificing others to fulfill their desires and imagine that they were this type of creature and ends up accepting the offer of the great and supreme Fleo after all he wanted to see what someone transcendent who made all existing power his desired and would achieve then swears that this body and all his powers belong to him and Fleo apologizes for having overreacted but the girl says that it was not necessary and thinks that just remembering that look she was emotional making RYS jealous because she Surely she had some strange thoughts since she was all red but Fleo shifts the focus and questions if the time manipulation magic he used to heal RYS's wounds could repair the damage to the city and Jin asks him to never use that magic again and explains that time manipulation controlled only within the target's area and there could be some discrepancies between those inside and outside that range which could lead to unpredictable accidents but it was able to restrict the reaching the target to only one individual since it wasn't the type of magic that humans were supposed to use making Fleo curious about how he could use it. So the girl explains that as he was a supreme being, his stats showed that his abilities were infinite, making Fleo remember that symbol, while the girl said that with infinite abilities, he was able to use a type of magic called Epiphany, which only those who earned the title of Transcendent could use and once any kind of magic was used on him he acquired the magic for himself and all the spells associated with it and when it hit him with his magic he acquired the spells that only the Jin could use and as time manipulation could cause accidents he decides to use a repair spell to take care of the city while RYS was thoughtful. And when they return home, the knights are terrified to learn that a djinn would live with them now that she was the servant of this supreme being and Fleo says that as she had nowhere to go so he brought her home leaving Blossom outraged because he was talking as if she was a stray cat that he brought home. But during the night Fleo gets thoughtful and Balarosa asks if there was something wrong so he replies that he was just thinking about some things and apologizes for her having gone through tense times because of him and she replies that he didn't need to worry and Fleo says that HIYA had said that he possessed an incredible power but admits that he had no idea how best to use it would be and Balarosa says that she didn't have power like his but she didn't understand it either since those she thought were enemies were friends and those she thought were allies were not to be trusted and she began to wonder 
why she was working to get stronger and who she should raise her sword against, and if she hadn't met him and Ryas, she sure wouldn't have worried about these things and was grateful for having met them, since they made her realize that certain things were not as she imagined, making the boy thoughtful. And later Fleo goes to the room and notices that Arwaya seemed discouraged, so the girl throws him on the bed and asks if he would go back to the world he came from and from what HIYA had said. Once any kind of magic was used on him, he acquired all associated with it and starts to get emotional as he asks if now that he was able to use magic from a jinn he could return to her world and begs him to take her with him. After all she wanted to be by his side no matter where he goes, but Fleo replies that he would not return and hugs her while continuing to say that her old world would be a terrible terrible place for a demi-human like her. So he did not intend to return since he did not want to leave her behind and asks if she would become his real wife and admits that when he thought he had he was terrified and felt destroyed inside and for that reason he couldn't control himself and he knew that he had said that they would be husband and wife only in front but he couldn't imagine a life without. Her by his side and Arwaias admits that for her marriage was never a pretense and was his wife from the beginning and was always taught to fight and lead a but after meeting him, she learned that she had several emotions she could feel. And the two finally kiss and Arwaias reminds him that he once told her that he had changed his appearance to escape the castle but now he had no need to hide her anymore. But he replies that his identity in this world was Fleo and who he had become and it only mattered that she knew him so his old name and appearance could be in the past and he goes back to kissing her. But when the weather starts to warm up they notice that HIYA was watching them and embarrassed they ask how long she had been there and the jinn replies that since the two of them sat in bed and it was natural for her to witness the paths trodden by her supreme being and should observe everything and Fleo says that it was forbidden to invade people's privacy but she questions what was the problem of hiding this since procreation it was. Something normal making the boy embarrassed as he said that she had to learn some common sense now that she was going to live with them and RYS is outraged that she got in their way while the girls were listening to everything from the other room embarrassed and HIY suggests that she would be invisible while they made it to watch them and not bother them leaving them both outraged. The princess begins her search for Fleo who was reunited with her companions eating the delicious food that RYS made together with HIY, who wished she had prepared the food with magic, but the patron did not allow it after all cooking for her husband's pack was her job as a wife, and so she suggested that Jin take care of the cleaning in addition to the laundry, which HIY could do in seconds. But that leaves the writers frustrated, because taking care of things around the house was a way of compensating for living in favor. But then Blossom decides to put in the effort in the vegetable garden, since this was her job, and with the help of the horned rabbit, who turns into a bear they start plowing the land, while Byerly took care of the horses in the hope of being able to help financially around the house, and as for Bolano, she was thinking of her father and brother, since she left the knights before becoming a castle mage like them. But she was happy because Fleo was always patient when teaching her and didn't want to waste it, so I was determined to learn a lot of spells. But Blossom's scream catches the attention of everyone who comes across a beast detonating the vegetable garden. He runs towards the girls, but Bolano manages to block his blow and Valerosa goes to them worried and admits that she was to blame since she didn't want to eliminate him because the creature seemed very calm and ended up bringing him to the house but now she was going to fix it. But Byerly is curious and asks if he went wild suddenly and Valerosa confirms it, making the girl have an idea of the reason, then asks SYB to assume his horned rabbit form and then she lassos and rides the beast horse and manages to calm him down, leaving the girls impressed, but Byerly ends up having an idea and asks Valerosa if they could use the land around the property and the girl replies that the land belonged to the local lord and they could use it if they bought from him just like Fleo had done. RYS was happy because finally she was alone with Fleo on a date even though he was going to sell some equipment, but she was really happy because now they were a real couple, which also makes Fleo happy, but finally he arrives at the place to sell a suit of armor that leaves the seller amazed with the quality and suggests that he try to add some color with some magic stones leaving Fleo, impressed with their beauty and upon picking one the merchant says that it was called light stone and was very rare and valuable, while RYS admired her husband. But everyone is surprised by a darkness that takes over the city and from a magic circle, comes a monster and Fleo, goes to RYS who warns him about the creature leaving the boy worried about the people of the city, so he runs towards the monster. But the witch on the monster's shoulder finally finds the princess and goes towards her. While Fleo was curious as to why HIY was there, but she says that she came to find them after feeling a wave of evil and warns them that in fact that monster was a human who took that form because of the witch on her shoulder, known as Damalina's the Apricot the great midnight mage who was long known as the most powerful mage in Clyrode. 
who stained her hands with the magic of the darkness, but was defeated by the great hero of the time, and her mental remained even after her body perished and was sealed inside the pedestal that held the sword in which H.I.Y. was sealed and it seems that she ended up returning after her seal was broken and R.Y.S. asks, if that didn't mean that it was all her fault and H.I.Y. agrees, since she used the power of the sword that sealed her, but if she took it in consideration of the weakness of the humans who failed to seal her and the foolishness of those who freed her seal, they would be more to blame than her, but either way she asks the supreme being to let her eliminate the scoundrel who threatens the city and Fleo allows. But meanwhile, the witch mocked the only knight who protected the princess, who knew who she was, and the witch orders the monster to eliminate the princess, but the djinn stops his blow, making the witch angry while questioning how she dared to get in his way, but H.I.Y. replies that she didn't know if it was really in her way, since it would eliminate anyone who disturbs the life of the supreme being she served, but Damalinas complains that she talked too much to those who couldn't make their wish come true and starts to attack the djinn who was not affected by her spells and not even the monster's physical attack along with her magic was able to hit her, so Damalinas decides to stop the jokes and summons the forces of darkness to amplify the monster's power and make it a giant, leaving the princess distressed. But the spell is broken by Fleo leaving the witch surprised while H.I.Y. greets her supreme being who says that he thought the size of the monster would be a problem, so he dispelled the spell and Jin apologizes for having made him get involved in the problem, but Fleo asks her not to worry and Jin decides to end the situation, while Damalinas was in disbelief that her magic was undone by a human. Then H.I.Y. uses a spell that makes the girl go to the ground and brings the hero to his old body, and thanks to this she turns the witch into a little ball and tells her that she should consider herself honored to spend eternity inside her and swallows her leaving Fleo worried if she would be okay, and H.I.Y. replies that it was no problem after all after removing her from the body she had possessed she sealed her inside of her mental world and was determined to discipline her to use her powers for. The benefit of the supreme being in RYS says that sometimes even she knew how to do the right thing from time to time making the djinn laugh and thank her boss who admits that this hero only caused trouble. But the princess goes to them and asks if he would be the Fleo who confirms and she is happy to finally meet him and introduces herself as Elizabeth the first princess of Clyrode who thanks him for saving the kingdom from this threat in addition to asking his sincere apologies for all the disrespect he suffered by the king and the former great hero but Fleo asks her not to bow down and is surprised that the hero has been dismissed, and that the princess reveals that they actually came to the city. Looking for him and asks if he would accept to accompany her to the castle as the true great hero, since he believed that the gods had united them in this place, but Fleo replies that he was sorry and refuses his offer, since a role like this would be for someone who would not hesitate to exercise his power for the good of humanity, which he was not capable of, after all, the life that it was the best for him, that he just wanted to live in peace with his wife. And when they return home, the knights welcome them and make the proposal to expand the property, because Byerly was planning to capture and breed beast horses. But for that more land would be needed and Blossom would have more space for planting, and with the beasts they could transport all the vegetables. Making RYS worried since they didn't have tremendous power, like her husband and couldn't imagine magical beasts obeying humans and asks if it wouldn't be better for them to use horses, but. Byerly replies that it would be more expensive to keep them and believed that if they could let the magical beasts run free in a huge pasture, they would be peaceful, and with that, she manages to convince Fleo that she would talk to the lord of the lands, but the girls who wanted to take care of the negotiation and pay for everything, but Fleo asks if they were sure, since it was a high value, leaving the surprised girls, after all, were far from the capital and even if they pooled all their savings they would not be able to buy it, but Fleo asks them not to worry, since he would pay for it, after all the expansion would be part of the house and he would be happy if they could take care of the land, but as he notices that the girls were uncomfortable, he decided to charge 30% of the profits of the new land as rent, making the girls excited. And then they start to plow the land and as they were basing everything on the sale of vegetables, Fleo suggests that they try to grow more difficult vegetables and just needed to control the temperatures with magic, but Blossom didn't want to occupy him. After all she started to do it because she didn't want to live without helping them and so H.I.Y. offers to help her and as a servant of the boss. It would be okay for her to use her magic as a tool, but Blossom she believed that vegetables were only good if grown with care and lots of sunlight and they couldn't rely on magic for everything, but H.I.Y. asks if agriculture wasn't inefficient when it came to climate change, which could be managed with magic, but Blossom was determined not to accept her help. And Bolano interrupts them because she was interested in seeing how H.I.Y.A. would use magic for cultivation, making Blossom curious about the way she was dressed. 
Sobolano explains that she decided to go to magic school and was going to a training and at first thought about going to review her magic, but they said that she would be welcome not only as a student, but also as a teacher leaving everyone impressed as she thanked Fleo for teaching her several types of spells that even someone with little mana like her could use. But Fleo congratulates her because this was only possible because of her effort and Bolano thanks him and says that he had looked at several books and grimoires and realized that the magic he thought was useful only for combat could also be useful in everyday life and goes back to asking if Blossom would accept HIYA's help leaving her with no way out and so Fleo suggests that she try to use magic on only one part of the plantation and in case she thinks that the vegetables are not as tasty as they should she would not need to sell them until she is satisfied with the result making the girl agree with her idea and so HIYA uses magic on the plantation and Byerly rides on a beast horse while Valorosa is thoughtful. And Fleo was happy that everyone found something they wanted to do and that included him who wanted to open his own store in this world making RYS excited, since he knew it would be a success, and he would ask his friends to go to the store. But of course he would tell them to take on human forms, after all they were demons, and says he would do anything for him, so he shouldn't hesitate to ask for what he wanted. Making Fleo happy and for this he hands her a ring that he had created with a beautiful stone and that would actually be a wedding ring. After all he also owned one making the girl emotional. While the great hero was imprisoned along with a girl who was desperate. Valorosa is at a loss to understand why she is in a church and is surprised to see Eliminus saying that the demons were dedicating world domination as a wedding gift to her and the demon king. Leaving Valorosa distressed when the demon king tries to kiss her. But it was all just a nightmare that left her not understanding why she was having these dreams since she didn't want to think about the demon king. And that day RYS noticed that the girl looked a little pale. But Balarosa replies that she didn't need to worry, since she just hadn't slept well because of some unpleasant dreams, making RYS agitated by asking if she was in love, since for the Lupin's dreams were the very image of their desires, and they said that when you have a forbidden passion, that person appeared in your dreams and became nightmares embarrassing the girl, while frantically denying it, but her friends run up to her and ask who she was in love with and if it was the demon king who came to see her many times, but Balarosa says that he came because of Fleo, which Blossom suspected since he always left right when she wasn't there and his intentions were very obvious, which they all agree except Valorosa, who believed that he must be resentful that she raised her sword against him and was waiting for the best moment to eliminate her, which the girls didn't believe, since she would surely be able to convince him to do anything and could even break down the wall between the species, as well as Fleo and RYS, who replies that she and her darling were madly in love. Arousing the girl's curiosity about how they fell in love and what part of Fleo made her attracted, and RYS replies that he was wonderful, and if he had to name something it would be his complacent way that was different from the Lupins who solved everything by dueling even in the choice of companions, so it would be his end if he showed any opening. But Fleo always seemed to be on his guard open, and at first she felt that she needed to help him, but little by little she realized that being two softies was not something bad and embarrassed, Fleo interrupts them and warns that the barrier he had placed around the city to keep the demons and monsters away had detected it, leaving the girls distressed to think that the city would be in danger, even though the barrier had not yet been broken. But even so, they should keep an eye on the city. That was being watched by a demon who watches the barrier. And meanwhile, the princess found out that the gold coins that Fleo had donated them would be road gold coins issued by the castle. Which makes the princess curious since this type of coin was not normally distributed to the public, and one of her advisors remembers that they gave this type of coin recently to the young man named Banaza, who was summoned from another world and then banished to the forest Elevisa doing the princess realize that in fact Banaza and Fleo may be the same person, which makes the princess distressed, since surely he would never accept to be a hero and if this is true, they should start by apologizing to get his forgiveness, and then one of the guards announces that the former hero and his servant escaped from the dungeon, leaving the princess worried, so he orders them to ask for help from the vigilantes and adventurers from all over the world. Kingdom to find him and thinks that everything would be different if Fleo had been named a hero right at the beginning, but now there was no point in saying these things, after all even she had supported the golden-haired hero. And in the woods the former hero and his servant were hiding in the bush where the hero was angry with that jinn, because now they treated him like a criminal and the girl remembers that anyway they were fugitives and thieves after all he had taken a magic bag in the treasure room, but he says that this was not theft since he just accepted it in place of the reward money they owed him since the deal would be that when he completed his work as a hero they would give him enough gold to have a good life, which was a lie since it was the only thing he had managed to get and that he didn't actually have any money. But at least he had a treasure chest and when he opens it, he finds a shovel, 
excavator that makes him frustrated and ends up screaming, making the guards find out his location. But when they arrive at the they didn't find anything since the hero and the girl were hiding in a hole, making the girl admit that this shovel was amazing for having created this hole in a few seconds. But now they had a new problem, since they didn't know how to get out of there. But now let's go to the Demon King's castle, where Eulimanus said that his intelligence group still had no news of Fleo, and she believed that he had already left the kingdom, which the Demon King didn't believe. After all, despite Fleo's magic being powerful, he could only teleport to places he had already visited, and as he was summoned to this world, he still didn't have time to leave the kingdom, but Eulimanus advises them not to prioritize the search for him, but the advancement with the army, as. He believed that even though the purification magic is powerful, they could still fill the land with militium, if they lead an attack with magical beasts to clear the way for the army, to overthrow the castle and make the wish of the demons come true. But the king gets up leaving the girl distressed while he questioned if she had forgotten that that man was able to use purification alone, and even if they used the magical beasts he could finish them off in seconds, so finding him and whoever accompanies him would be a priority and Eulimina's warns that in this way, it would be impossible to silence those who oppose him and the demon king goes to the girl who is terrified when he takes his hand to her. But in fact he puts his hand on her gourd, and he says he was sorry to give her so much trouble, but he couldn't break his own principles. Since he didn't see the point in the unnecessary sacrifice of his companions to conquer humans, and in the background, a demon watched them. And later she tells what she heard to the demon king's brother Uigard, who questions if his brother was senile and starts beating the girl, while saying that his brother was not only refusing to return the advancement, but also wanted to add a human to the ranks of the army and the demon says that that human possessed the power worthy of a great hero, which Uigard considered terrible since hero or not they were just supposed to destroy him, after all there was no need to befriend a human. Since applying complete destruction was the duty of a demon king, but since it got to this point, he had no choice but to take his brother's throne in order to conquer Clyrode. And we go back to RYS and Fleo who comments that earlier his barrier detected another violation, but everything seemed calm, and as they still had time he suggests that they have lunch making RYS excited. But as they walk they come across Holdy closing his shop and Fleo asks the reason and the woman admits that she was sad to leave the store she had been running for so many years, but because of her age it was difficult to find. New one suppliers. Since during the last battle against the demon. King's army, her favorite workshop ended up being destroyed and now the transport routes were a mess and so she decided to close the shop, making RYS sad to realize that the effects of the war were felt even far from the battlefield, but Fleo tries to calm her down by showing that they still had shops opening and starting something new, which showed the resilience of humans and now they should have lunch. And when she arrives at the restaurant, Valerosa finds them and offers to pay for lunch, leaving RYS frustrated that she ends up ending up with her romantic lunch and even reluctantly, she ends up agreeing and asks what had happened to her. To suddenly be wanting to pay for lunch and Valerosa says that she had risen in rank in the guild. So they increased her rewards and the two congratulate her since she seemed very motivated, but in the Valerosa was just desperate to get rid of the nightmares. And thanks to her training she could now receive cash rewards and for that she wanted to thank them in some way. But they end up being interrupted by HIYA, who warns them that someone with immense magical power was approaching and even starts a spell to drive him away but RYS tells her to stop and Valerosa is distressed, while Fleo was happy to realize that the one who had created it those signs on the barrier had been Gozel, who has lunch with them and says that he came because his intelligence corps reported a strange magic in this place and he was happy in Velo, and he would also like to have a good conversation with Valerosa, who was trembling and wondered if those strange dreams were prophetic, and while they ate Gozel said that human cuisine was really vibrant and admits that before inheriting the throne he used to visit places like this to observe the enemy, and even though they had restaurants in the demon. Realm it was hard to call it cooking what Fleo could imagine and Gozel asks if Valerosa liked to cook and RYS replies that she was great at making sweets and despite having tried to teach her, she found it very difficult, since they required very detailed measurements arousing the interest of Gozel and Fleo asks if he was interested in human culture and Gozel replies that the prosperity of a culture was proportional to its military might, causing Valerosa to question if this meant that he was now watching the enemy's movements and he replies that as someone who was trying to recruit Fleo, he couldn't deny it, making Valerosa angry by saying that even though he knew how they lived their lives he still wanted to run all over them which Gozel agrees making the girl even angrier, but Gozel goes on to say that both sides were running over each other, and even if the very existence of demons is harmful to humans, this should not be a reason for them to endure persecution. 
making Fleo curious. Since even living with RYS he never felt anything inconvenient and HIY explains that the biggest difference between humans and demons would be the presence of militium inside the body of demons, and there were some who could control it and others who can't and those who can't end up releasing small ones amounts of militium, and if too many gather in one place the area ends up being contaminated and becomes harmful. To humans making Fleo. Remember the forest de la Visa and RYS says that he didn't need to worry since she, SYB and the beast horses were able to control the militium and Fleo replies that this didn't worry him, but this was a deeper issue than he imagined and Gozel agrees already that in addition the demons favored meritocracy and many loved to fight. So the slightest conflict would end in aggression. So he gets up and apologizes for making everyone uncomfortable and asks them to enjoy the rest of the lunch in peace. Since he was going to leave, leaving everyone thoughtful. And on the way back Fleo thinks he felt relieved when he was dragged into this world where he saw no discrimination against the demi-humans and they reunite with his companions who ask Balarosa if there was something wrong but the girl denies it and they continue walking while Fleo thought that the wall between humans and demons was even more explicit and unyielding than anything else from his old world and ends up embracing RYS, who is embarrassed but he asks her to let him stay like that a little longer making her realize that he was not okay. But in the meantime the former hero and his servant climb the hole and the girl can't get up and ends up making the hero fall again. Balarosa praises RYS's food that has been evolving thanks to her teacher, who was so happy to know that she conquered her husband, who taught her a perfect dish for the family that the children would love. But they are interrupted by someone knocking on the door, and when Fleo opens it he comes across the first princess and is curious about why she is there. After all he had already refused her request for become the great hero, and she asks for forgiveness for coming without telling them. But she needed to apologize to him again, or rather to the great hero candidate, Banaza, leaving Fleo and RYS surprised. And then Balarosa pours tea to the princess who thanks her and asks the girls to let her have a private conversation with Fleo, since she had a very important matter to discuss with him, which RYS refuses, since she knew how the kingdom had treated her husband and so would not leave her alone with him. But Fleo decides to listen to her on the condition that his wife stays with them, and affairs, she didn't accept it should leave leaving RYS all silly, while the princess accepted her condition and. As soon as the knights retreat the princess kneels before Fleo and once again apologizes to Banaza for the various injustices that the kingdom has committed against him, especially for the spells they cast in his magic bag, in addition to his banishment to the forest de la Visa. But Fleo asks her to raise her head and in addition, he it was no longer Banaza, but a simple merchant named Fleo, so it didn't matter how many times she apologizes since she had nothing he can do and asks her to get. Straight to the point since a princess wouldn't come just to apologize to him and the princess says he was right and pulls out a map with the location of Clyrode's army leaving Fleo curious about why she shows it Elizabeth explains that the mages of the kingdom had not yet recovered from the purification spell they cast around the city and that it was about to disappear and when that happened the demonic army would attack them again and for this reason they had no choice but to take advantage. Of the geographical advantage they had to position the troops, which left some cities unprotected and so she wanted to ask for their help to protect them, making RYS angry when she considers something extremely selfish, especially because of what they had made her husband go through, to now involve a man who hates fighting in a war and the princess reveals that the king was bedridden since the day of purification, but would soon wake up and she believed that he would send troops after Fleo 4. Having links with demons, making RYS question if this would be a threat, what the princess she denies it and explains that since she still had the authority to act in the king's place, she could do some things like hold him responsible for the defamation of the true great hero and the appointment of the false hero, which would make the king abdicate his throne, but for that she would need the help of Fleo. Since the king protected the kingdom from various dangers, but failed to offer help to the weak and abandon them, and so she wanted to succeed to the throne to save everyone, but to do so it would be necessary to demonstrate the same level of authority that the king possessed making RYS think that she just wanted to use her husband to establish herself as ruler, but Fleo asks her to calm down and says that she just wanted a guarantee that he would not join the Demon King's forces. After all he shared extremely confidential information, making RYS curious, then Fleo questions why. She would share such valuable information, if he had a connection with the demons, then it would surely be to make him protect a region that was not involved in the war, making RYS realize that this would be to hide him, which he confirms. Since the princess never counted him as part of the kingdom's combat forces in the war, and the princess confesses that she really did not wish for any land to be abandoned and Fleo asks if she didn't think he could share this information with the demons and 
She asks him to consider this as the greatest proof of trust she had in him and goes back to asking for his help leaving Fleo thoughtful. And meanwhile the hero and his servant were hiding in the city and the girl admits that she was hungry as well as exhausted and the hero says that they needed to outweat the pursuers since soon he would be the great hero again, and gives her some cookies who gets emotional, after all they had little food, but the hero doesn't care about that and admits that he was surprised that she is still following him and TSUIA says the even after all, it would have been easier for him to escape without her. Slowing him down, leaving the hero embarrassed, but a spider interrupts them and traps them in its web and the demon who helps the demon king's brother is happy with the offerings he found. But that night RYS lays down with Fleo and asks him if he was thinking about what the princess had asked for and Fleo confirms and admits that even though he hates the idea of fighting, he couldn't sit around doing nothing while he knew that there were cities suffering and was wondering what he should do in this world, which he had already decided since if they have a child together, he wanted the child he couldn't live happily together with human and demonic children, and although it wasn't easy he wanted to create a free world for her, and RYS tells him that she knew he was capable of doing the things that others considered impossible, and although he didn't have much he could do she would help him making Fleo happy. And the next day a child is attacked by the demonic army, but Fleo with a wolf mask and RYS in his wolf form save her and Fleo erects a barrier, while telling the girl to run away, and RYS comments that he had said he would help him, but asks if he was sure it was a good idea to take such a tedious job without a reward and Fleo replies that if he accepted a reward it would mean that he sided with the humans for money, which he lost when he heard the princess's request, leaving RYS terrified. Because if he had lost, it meant that he was going to marry the princess and wonders what he should do, since they had other demonic races that took several wives, although Fleo tries to deny it insistently. But a demon interrupts them and questions what a wolf did next to a human and Fleo replies that they were the city guards and if they agreed to withdraw they would let them go, but if they intended to continue the attack he would have no mercy and the demons question how a petty human dared to underestimate them and Fleo replies that he wasn't underestimating them and was just saying that it would be a waste of energy on both sides and RYS says that anyway they couldn't even break the barrier. And they end up being surprised by a cyclops who was determined to break it and RYS says that within the Demon King's army, there was no other race that possessed more strength than them, and this one in particular served Uigard. The younger brother of Gozel and Cyclopes begins to say that the wolves were nothing more than a cowardly race that they had a pathetic leader who was eliminated despite calling himself one of the four hellish making RYS angry and asks her husband to let her take care of him, since even if her brother was defeated, he couldn't look down on the Lupins, who were a race that valued military might above all else, and as a younger sister, she couldn't sit still and ignore such an insult and would show this arrogant being how different they were in terms of strength, and even though he didn't think it would be anything good Fleo agrees since it was important to her, but asks her not to take the life of the Cyclops what RYS already knew. And so the two start the combat, and RYS uses her agility to land several blows on the Cyclops that she considers her weak attacks and RYS agrees since her meat armor was very resistant, so it took a little more effort to avoid eliminating him, but thanks to her husband, she learned a thing called moderation, and uses a jump spell to then switch positions with the Cyclops who throws her slap against her who switches positions, again making the monster's weapon hit himself, and then RYS throws several trees at him with her gravity magic to pin him to the ground and asks if he wanted to continue and the monster complains that she fought with the same insolent methods as humans and RYS replies that this insolence was the only reason for him to stay alive leaving the Cyclops angry, and so he orders the other demons to finish her off. But Fleo traps them with his magic, after all the fight had already been defined and heals the Cyclops who questions what he intended with this and Fleo replies that he had already told them to retreat and although he could send them to the Delavisa forest with a teleportation magic, he was sure that they would come back soon and so he wanted them to go of their own free will. Making Cyclopes curious about who he would be and Fleo replies that he was just a human who befriended this demon and would also like to be friends with them and ominously he says that if they refused he would confront them until they all give up leaving the demons terrified. And as soon as they leave, RYS says that he had been wonderful and it was great that they practiced his tough face, although she was curious about if they had done the right thing since they would go back to attacking when they got another order, so they should have treated them more cruelly to destroy their will to fight back, making Fleo agree that this could be the best way to make sure they don't go back to attack, but would only cause the hatred between the races to continue to grow. And then the townspeople thank them for saving them and are curious about the wolf. But Fleo replies that they didn't need to worry since she was his partner and says that they came at the request of the first princess, so they should thank her. 
While in Clyro, they received a report about an unknown adventurer who was appearing in various regions scaring away the forces of the demon army and only knew that he was accompanied by a silver wolf and hid his face with a wolf mask and said that after dispersing the demons he would leave without saying his name. Leaving the advisor surprised that he left without demanding a reward, which the guard confirms and in addition, he also said that the first princess had sent him, leaving the two of them surprised. After all, it could only be one person and so the advisor orders the guard to inform everyone that if they see this adventurer with the silver wolf, they should fully support him, making the princess think that someday she should return this favor to Fleo who was doing so much for them. And on the battlefield Gozel watched them indignantly that Uagard was acting without receiving his orders and one of his informants warned him that Ulimina sent her with an emergency report, since Uagard was staging an insurrection and had occupied the throne room with the closest advisors. And in the castle Uigard celebrated that everything was going according to his plans and the demon says that to make it better they took some humans with high skills, and when he faced goal, they would perform the secret art borrowed from the god of evil, by implanting a magic circle for the ritual of superhybridization, using those two as offerings to the god of evil, and with this ritual he would surely emerge victorious in the fight. Against goal that I was heading towards the castle. Gozel and Ulimina's go to Fleo and Arwaes's house where Gozel asks them to allow the two to live in his house for a while and tells them about when he learned that Uigard occupied the throne room, while Ulimina's questioned how the members of the four infernals of the army were doing that since their job was to catch the traitors and throw them in prison. But the three demons say they were not betraying Gol and yes, serving as witnesses of his battle against Uigard, since they hoped that with this he would open his eyes. After all he was a little strange and was always away from the castle, but even believing that no one but Gol was worthy of that throne, there were some among his forces who talked about rebellion so it was necessary for him to exert his power. And when they enter the throne room, the demon who assists Uigard tells them that no interference would be allowed during the duel. But Ulimina's tells her to stop it and questions if she had any idea how much care and concern Gol felt for them, and the demon begins to provoke the girl, since she was so weak that she didn't even notice her presence and Ulimina's decides to attack Uigard, since she was going to arrest them herself for her betrayal, but her claws break and Uigard throws her away. With a punch since she was too weak, Ulimina's even tries to use a trick with the claw that was left on the ground, but the demon stops her and when she was going to attack Ulimina's. Greenal arrives with Gol who asks her to take care of Ulimina's and Uigard says that he was tired of waiting for him and challenges him to a duel for the throne of the demon king, while the former great hero was desperate to escape. But Gol tells Uigard that he had no intention of getting involved in a fight and Uigard replies that even his subordinates agreed to the duel since they thought he had become a coward too much to remain at the top of the demon race on account of his foolish and unbecoming actions for demon king and goal asks what actions he considered foolish and uigard questions if he was making a fool of himself since he has been visiting a human city often to indulge in his pleasures and furthermore withdrew the entire army when they were one step away from victory and rejected all suggestions to retake the breakthrough making them doubt if he was serious about his desire to conquer humanity and goal goes back to asking if he was the one who sent the army to Clyrode without his consent which Uigard confirms since they couldn't let this opportunity pass and goal asks if the generals agreed with him and they remain silent making goal admit that he had no choice and Uigard orders him to swear by the demonic ring that symbolized his status as a demon king who would fight him for the throne leaving one of the demons excited by the pressure of Gol's true power, who relinquishes ownership of the demon ring, surprising everyone when he says he would retire as demon king, but Uigard questions if he was mocking him and Gol replies that if everyone was finding his actions inappropriate for a demon king, then he had no reason to remain in this position, and Uigard, he tells him to stop joking and goes after Gol, who with just one kick sends him away for what he had done to Ulimina's and apologizes to the Infernal for the trouble he had caused, leaving everyone in shock as the hero and his servant fled the castle. And we go back to the present day where Ulimina's says that they had no money and had nowhere to go and Fleo says that he had understood but needed everyone's opinion and Balarosa finally arrives and is surprised to come across the Demon King, and when Fleo tells her that he was planning to let Gozel and Ulimina's live with them for a while, she is paralyzed and Gozel is impressed since she still doesn't she was no longer on alert. But Ulimina's replied that she was clearly terrified. And then the knights gather and Gozel asks them not to be so tense. After all he was no longer the demon king, since he abdicated his throne and left the army. And since he abandoned his duty as ruler, it would not be right to remain in the territory of the demons. And since he could only remember Fleo, he decided to ask for his help since he considered him a friend and Blossom asks about his army. That attacked Clyrode a few days ago, and Arwyas explains that actually the one who was responsible 
for the attack would be the new demon king and Gozel says he didn't have any hostile feelings and swears not to hurt any human and Bolano asks if then it would be like when he came to have tea and Gozel confirms and Yuliminas says that even then they were still demons and Fleo asks her not to scare the girls and RYS ends up being curious about how Yuliminas ended up bankrupt and she explains that the intelligence corps she led also left the army and this former demon king gave all his money to them which he considered an adequate reward since thanks to them the army had minimal losses and Gozel admits that he never accepted the methods of the other demon kings, and for that reason, he took the throne from the former king who would be his father, and even abdicated from his throne there were still things he could do, as well as Fleo who interrupted the conflict between humans and demons by remaining an unknown adventurer, leaving RYS surprised to find out that he knew and Fleo decides to get straight to the point and tells the girls that he and RYS thought it was okay for the two of them to stay, but he wanted their opinion, and even reluctantly, the girls agree, leaving Balarosa indignant when questioning what they were saying since even though he had abdicated the throne he had still been a demon king and asks if they really wanted to live with them, and in the lowest possible way RYS uses her extreme cuteness to ask if she was telling them to kick out her former boss and colleague now that they lost the house and Fleo says that putting it this way would be the same as coercing her, and even SYB wanted them to if they stayed, Balirosa ended up giving in which made RYS extremely excited, since they now had the most powerful force of the demons in the pack. And later Gozel tries to help the girls with their chores, but Blossom didn't need any help and his presence made the beast horses terrified. So he went to Fleo, and was impressed by the items he had created, and the shield with dragon scales caught his eye and Fleo remembered that it was Gozel's dragons who says he didn't need to worry, since the winner using the loser as sustenance was how the world worked, and besides, they were great for storing the spells he put on the shields, and Gozel says that if the human army used them, the Demon King's army would need a plan to deal with them, but Fleo explains that they were only for individual adventurers, and he must have realized that the spells weren't made for big group battles, which Gozel already knew. And in the background Yuliminas asks RYS how Gozel could be getting along so well with a human, and admits that he seemed more excited than when he led the demons and didn't know how to feel about it making RYS thoughtful. But she notices Balarosa hiding, and that night they all ate together and laughed a lot while Balarosa was away. And later, while RYS was looking up at the sky, RYS and Fleo went to her and Fleo says that RYS was worried about her. Just like he and RYS noticed that she seemed depressed since they ended up forcing her to agree to leave Gozel and Yuliminas lived with them, and hoped they could talk for a while and Balarosa says that since she lived in favor, she was not in a position to give an opinion, and was only shaken when the others agreed without hesitation and Fleo says that he liked the life they had where he sold equipment made with materials that they hunted to make money and ate the vegetables that Blossom grew, while Byerly and SYB took care of the magical beasts and Bolano together with HIYA studied magic, and in this way they lived with respect Mutu, that it could be ideal, but it doesn't always work well which Balarosa agrees and admits that he was thinking that it wasn't she was suitable to live with them despite her desire to continue living with them forever, but unlike the girls she was useless and besides, in her mind she understood that Gozel could be a demon, but when she was talking, laughing or eating the same foods with them, with a delighted expression on her face he showed himself to be no different from them and knew that the demons considered them the aggressors, but even so, she couldn't accept it, since despite being a novice who had never been on a battlefield, she witnessed several knights crying for wounded soldiers and lost comrades, and even though she knew that this man who stopped being a demon king was not evil, she didn't know if she could live and laugh under the same roof as him, which Fleo considered natural to feel, since she was sure that all the humans of the world rejected demons to a certain extent, although some hate them more than others, and besides, he believed that the two of them didn't come just out of necessity, which RYS agreed with since they intended to keep an eye on this house, after all, she had her husband, HIYA, and Damalina's inside HIYA, in addition to her, which made this family a gathering of people who would be a powerful addition to either side, making Balarosa questioned if they didn't feel uncomfortable being watched, which Fleo denies, since she had nothing to hide and so she didn't need to throw her resentments away, after all, they lived together with mutual respect, which meant accepting each other's way of life, so it was okay not to force herself to be friends with everyone, making the girl thoughtful and RYS confesses that she was curious, since she rejected the king demon, but that's okay when it came to her who was part of the demon king's army, and in fact at first she planned to feed her soldiers with the knights leaving Balarosa, surprised since he couldn't think about it, after having seen her in a vulnerable state so many times, so he couldn't see her as an enemy that he should hate making Fleo laugh, while RYS said that earlier she said that it was useless what it was a lie. 
Since he taught her how to make these cookies and Fleo asks her to try them, because even though it didn't look like they were delicious making RYS indignant. And the next day Bali Rosa tells Gozel and Yuliminas that if the two of them harmed the humans in any way she would make them regret it and Gozel asks if that meant that she had accepted them to live in the same house, and was saying this to let them know that she would always be watching and Yuliminas asks what a knight who was freaking out the day before could do against them, making Bali Rosa ashamed, when he told her to be quiet. After all she couldn't say much after the beatings she took from. Fleo leaving the girl indignant while Gozel laughed. But he goes to Balarosa and thanks her for accepting them and Balarosa says that he would only take her hand after determining that the two were worthy of his trust and goes out on the hunt along with SYB, while Fleo watches everything. But in the demonic realm, the former great hero fled the territory with some jewels he had borrowed from the demon treasury, so that he can sell in the city to have a good life and be able to take a hot shower, which makes his servant excited despite reminding him that they were still being sought and so the hero planned to flee Clyrode while a source of Militium chased them. Uigard was in disbelief that the humans were managing to stop the army's advance to Clyrode with traps, which was never a problem for them. So he decides to crush them with a gigantic army, arousing Fufin's curiosity about where they were going to get such a large army and the demon king punches the demon. After all this was his job and when Uigard withdraws. One of the generals comments that he was not surprised by the commander, who he only knows how to advance while losing and remembers. That goal's advances were always anticipated by thorough research, which was no longer possible since the intelligence unit that conducted this investigation left the army and recognized that the morale among the officers was falling and Fufin asks them not to worry since they were going to hold a social gathering to reinforce the morale that was in free fall. And meanwhile, RYS was extremely happy to win a trip to a hot spring resort where she and her husband could enjoy it. But she didn't expect that in fact the prize was a group trip leaving RYS disappointed, and even considers the idea of exchanging it for another prize, but ends up accepting. And Goal recognizes that the place was very busy, while RYS was disappointed for not being able to be alone with her husband on the first trip they took and Fleo tries to console her, because it would be a way for them to meet Gozel and Yuliminas, and in addition, everyone could have fun together while the girls commented on the benefits of the seven hot springs and of course RYS only listens to the fertility one and completely changes her mood leaving Fleo curious, and when they arrive at the inn, they receive the appropriate clothing and RYS sneaks up to one of the employees to find out where the source of the fertility that the woman wishes her luck was. But when the knights go to get dressed, Blossom bumps into Uigard and even without knowing who he was, she gets scared and Uigard furious, but Fufin says that everything was fine, and after Blossom apologizes, Uigard questions the reason for letting her go and Fufin reminds him that they disguise themselves among the humans to bolster the morale of the troops, after so many defeats and causing a mess, could ruin everything and warns the demons that they should not take off their collars. That suppressed Militium, but RYS along with Gol and Yuliminas wondered what they were doing there, while Gol thought that they should have done the same when they were in the army, and Yuliminas almost tells the real reason for their meeting. But in a not at all friendly way, RYS tells the two not to dare to be noticed, since if Uigard saw them, it would surely not work and promises that if they ruin his trip with his darling she'd make them regret it. And after this pleasant conversation they get back together and Fleo shows the girls room and RYS says that as they were married they had a room of their own and Fleo says that Gozel also had a separate room, but he replies that he didn't mind staying together with everyone which Yuliminas and Balarosa leave out of the question and Bolano invites Byerly to the target practice but in no way suspicious her she replies that she wanted to go somewhere alone and RYS takes the opportunity to invite Fleo to the fertility hot spring and HIYA tries to accompany them, but RYS forbids it since today would be the day the two would make a baby and with that the two leave. Then HIYA enters her mental world and invites Damalinas to a special training, trapping the witch in a thigh, since she was interested in the practice called reproduction, and as she cannot observe the supreme being and his wife, she thought of trying it alone and Damalinas says that this was something to be done with someone she likes and besides the two were women. But HIYA replies that this was not a problem and always liked greedy things like her making Damalinas terrified to the point of expelling HIYA from her own mental world. After all, consent was required for such an act, making her wonder how she would make her accept it. And we go back to Fleo and RYS who asks his darling that after the bath he gives her a lot of loving attention and even pulls him into the female bath leaving Fleo embarrassed, but they end up in separate baths, and RYS starts talking to Fleo, who is happy that they are close and remembers that they have not yet gone on their honeymoon, and so suggests that they plan a trip alone leaving RYS excited and confesses that she was disappointed that they were not in the same bath, and talking to him this way it even seemed like they were doing something hidden, which was exciting, 
making Fleo embarrassed, and so she decides to get out of the bath. And as for Byerly, she was hidden to the Museum of Adult Pleasures, but she didn't count on that HIYA was also there, since she was curious about adult toys, in addition to her curiosity about how to get her partner's acceptance, so she pulls Byerly into the museum, which makes both of them very excited. And meanwhile Blossom advised Balarosa to stop casting fervent glances at Gozel, and if she was interested she should go to him but Balarosa replies that she was just keeping an eye on the two of them, and Blossom asks if Gozel was having fun, and he admits that it was great to see them in a more relaxed environment, and Balarosa was charmingly beautiful in that outfit making the girl embarrassed and Eulimenez tells him to stop. Looking at her, after all he already it was the demon king so he needed. To have composure and Blossom suggests they stop it and start drinking. So Gozel goes over to the girls. While the demon said that the human food was terrible despite being very excited eating and drinking unlike the infernals who praise the food. But Uagard sends someone to provide some entertainment and Fufin starts dancing. But Uagard sends the girl away, so two demons start hitting each other making the demons laugh at the fight that started and one of the demons ends up dropping his necklace which releases a little of Militium. And outside, the hero and his servant were celebrating that they had fled the demonic territory, and the hero, takes one of the crystals he took from the demon treasure, and gets excited, since when they sell it they would receive a large amount of money. But the hero feels a strong pain and drops the crystal that was accumulating Militium, and they are surprised by the fight of the demons, while Fufin questioned what they were doing leaving the hero's servant in shock upon noticing the presence of the demons. But the crystal sticks to the hero's chest and Fufin recognizes the two as the hero was taken by the crystal and transforms into a creature of Militium, leaving his servant desperate to be repeating herself. But in the meantime Bali Rosa asked if Eulimenes wanted Gozel to be the demon king again, which she confirms, after all, the demon society was composed of meritocracy and even among those with the greatest power. No one compared to Gozel who always imprisoned for the good of the demons and therefore should not assume a human form being erased after giving up his nobility and greatness. Making Balarosa smile, when he said that this was the reason why she calls him by his name, leaving Eulimenes. Indignant and Balarosa starts to talk that since they got together and they she noticed that she just calls him the former demon king or something, which made her look like a sulky child and thought that she was always very him, despite having left the army to accompany him, but now she can realize that in fact Eulimenes loved him, leaving the embarrassed girl but they end up being surprised by the gigantic being attacking the inn. But Fleo manages to save a woman who was almost injured, and since he couldn't move or the building would collapse, he asks RYS to find out what was going on, and is embarrassed when the girl jumps out without clothes and tells her to put something on. And the knights notice that Fleo managed to stop the collapse and wonder what that mass would be and Gozel explains that it was a concentrated mass of Militium, making Balarosa question. If this meant that there were demons in the place and Eulimenes replies that they saw Uagard the current demon king with his subordinates, and it would surely be their thing, and when using her ability she notices a magical jewel that absorbed Anne, amplified the Militium, which increased the magical power of the demons but in the hands of a human she got out of control and Balarosa doesn't care what it would be since they needed to leave everyone in the inn safely and Eulimenes advises them to take shelter and Gozel says that he was sure that Fleo could handle it, but Balarosa tells him to stop being ridiculous and questions if he intended to leave all the work to Fleo, who already he had been trapped for a long time between humans and demons, which caused great problems for him, but even so, he continued to use his powers to bring peace to everyone, so they could not expect him to handle everything, and although they were not strong, they were still by his side because they wanted to be useful and would do everything they could to help him. And after withdrawing, Eulimenes calls them idiots for not considering their own skill levels, which makes Gozel smile when he realizes that Fleo didn't keep them around just to protect them and remembers that RYS told them to be discreet, but it seems that it was not the time to hide and asks if Eulimenes would accompany him in the sermon that would come later. Making the girl remember that he never asked her opinion about nothing and embarrassed, she says that it was shameful for a demon king to side with the humans, and he replies that since he was now an ordinary man, and it would be acceptable to fight to protect his vacation with his friends. And so the two go to the roof and find RYS who is enraged and determined to purge whoever, is interrupting her time in the hot springs with her darling, and the infernals end up noticing Gol's presence making Uagard excited since this hot springs nonsense has been tedious and absorbs the Militium to start his attack against Gol. Uagard attacks Gozel with the Militium, but Gol manages to block his blows in addition to defending Eulimenes from the Militium creature, while Balarasa found Fleo to warn him about the monster that appeared, and it seems that Uagard the current demon king and the others were disguised in the resort and on the way she saw Gozel with some demons, and maybe they could be conspiring together which Fleo didn't believe, and in fact he was sure she knew too, and since Gozel and 
Ulimina's, were there. He had nothing to worry about, and could focus on defending the buildings. And before continuing the final episode, leave that registration to help with our goal of 2000 subscribers and by the way, don't forget to like and comment a lot to receive the anime of the new season, but enough of the fuss and let's go to the anime. Uigard tries to attack Gozel who possessed an impressive power, but Gozel considered his brother's manipulation of Militium to be a problem, so they needed to get the human out of the magic stone urgently, which RYS considered easy, and in her enraged state, she questions how they dared to ruin her trip with her husband and teleports to the hero to get him out of the crystal with a nice punch, making the Militia monster disappear, which leaves the servant of the hero desperate with the height he was falling, but Gozel prevents his fall, after all, he had promised that he would not harm humans, which Uigard considered, but Gozel asks Ulimina's to take care of the others, while dealing with Uigard and questions if he did not intend to retreat, which he denies, after all, he would make the mess he wanted, since that was what the demons did, and he goes back to attack Gozel who says that as he is, he was the demon king, he had to learn to pay attention to his surroundings, making Uigard enraged. While Ulimina's questioned what the other demons intended to do since they were on Uigard's side, but none of the generals were in the mood to fight, unlike Fufin who tries to attack her, but of course she ends up doing badly, while Uigard had his blows reflected by Gozel, but the demon notices that even reflecting them he still took damage. So he amplifies his power with Militium to attack him again, and says that he doesn't he was nothing more than a stupid pacifist who lost his aggressive nature and only focused on defense, but Gozel holds Uigard's face and says that he thought he would never have to use this power again and asks for forgiveness from his brother who goes to the ground without understanding why he can't release the Militium. So Gozel explains that the Militium was the source of the demon's immense physical strength and for this reason he sealed it temporarily, and at this time it was no different from humans, leaving Uigard indignant for not knowing this. Spell and Gozel says that he perfected it to defeat the ancient demon king, but it was a spell that humans were trying to create to deal with the ancient demon king who pressured humans, and for this reason he believed that trying to force enemies into submission would bring about the destruction of the demons making Uigard outraged that he had used the spell of an inferior race, and ends up being surprised by the staff of the inn who decide to intervene in the fight and use their talismans to trap the demons that caused the riot leaving everyone confused about what had happened and the head of the inn explains that the clothes of this place were imbued with magic for emergency cases, and as they were bothering the other customers she sends the demons in Team Rocket style taking off again leaving everyone impressed. While RYS filled the hero with slaps, but of course it was just to get the rest of Militium out and not because she was annoyed, but Balarasa warns her that Fleo was going to cast the repair spell, bringing the inn to what it was before and in this way everyone helps with the cleaning, in addition to treating the wounded, while the hero tried to escape from the hot springs by digging a hole and of course this idea didn't work at all. But then the owner of the inn thanks Fleo and his friends for all the help and as a form of gratitude they would work their best to serve them while enjoying the hot springs and of course RYS only thought about the source of fertility. And so the girls enjoy the hot springs while Ulimina's noticed that Balarasa was kind of big if you know what I mean and meanwhile Damalina's questioned what the shameless Jin did in the women's bath, but HIY questions if she was jealous and promises to give her a lot of attention later making Damalina's indignant, and as for Balano and Blossom they were curious about where Byerly was while that mess was going on and HIY answers that the two of them were enjoying a secret time together, which was kind of suspicious, and so the girls tried to get her to tell her what had happened. But in the other hot spring, Fleo said he was happy that everyone was getting along and Gozel says that the hot springs helped a lot and Fleo admits that he never thought that one day he would be in a fountain with him, which Gozel agrees with, although he admits that he was interested in him from the day they met, but it wasn't to get it wrong. After all that day he remained calm and collected in his presence, and above he used his great power for the peace of the two races and not for his own interests and maybe if the two join forces they will be able to build a new relationship between humans and demons, or at least that's what he imagined and Fleo replies that he was overestimating him, and it could be true that he possessed a gigantic amount of magical power, but unfortunately, there was no spell that can eliminate conflicts of this world. Then, nothing would change if they just trusted the magic. Making Gozel ask him what he thought would bring about the change, which Fleo didn't know how to answer, but at least he met new companies that he could trust so he intended to take advantage of everyone's help to do what he can, and Gozel promises to help him in whatever way he can, as one of his companions, 
making Fleo happy to accept his help. But then everyone starts eating and one of the employees gives a special dish for RYS to gain a lot of energy at night and Balarasa goes to Gozel, who is surprised as she thanks him for what he did earlier, since RYS told her that he did everything to protect humans making Gozel smile. After all he couldn't break the promise he made to her making Yuliminas indignant or maybe jealous. But this way they enjoy the meal. And at night RYS covers Blossom and is happy to finally be alone with Fleo, who asks her what she thought of humans and the girl replies that at first glance they looked weaker than the Lupins, but recognizes that among humans individual superiority was not determined by military ability, and still remembered the feeling of defeat when she ate the candy that Balarasa had made that had a soft and light feel and recognizes that it was difficult for her to say what she thought about humans, but now, she didn't consider them enemies and even felt affection, and is curious about the reason for the question, and Fleo replies that he just wanted to know what she felt since the battle between humans and demons would get worse, and if that happened he would have to protect the city to make sure people don't get hurt and would like his help, after all. He wanted to screen her by his side to make sure he wouldn't overdo it, and also to prevent him from being too much on the side of the humans, since that way they would go through this without making mistakes, making RYS emotional by promising to follow him anywhere. After all, she was his wife and in addition they had to ensure that their son can live a safe life and so they kiss and well, one thing takes another one and will move on to the next day. Where everyone recognizes that RYS was in a great mood in addition to his skin being stunning, making the girls realize what had happened unlike Gozel, who doesn't understand anything, but finally they teleport home and go back to living their normal lives with Blossom harvesting the vegetables to prepare something tasty, for when Bolano returns from her first day, as a teacher, and HIYA harvests the magically created vegetables leaving Blossom impressed that they are still delicious and even SYB enjoys the new vegetable, while Byerly said that they could count on her and the horses to take the vegetables to the city. And as for Gozel he was helping Fleo with the creation of items, despite admitting that this was quite complicated and Yulimina's questions what he was doing and if he intended to open a gun shop which he thinks is a great idea, leaving the girl outraged. But Balarosa greets them and admits that the armor that Gozel created was very useful, making him happy and Yulimina's indignant. But Balarosa changes the subject and remembers that today was the day of the princess's coronation, which Fleo confirms, and surely the castle city must have been very agitated and Balarosa hoped that the demons would not take the opportunity to start an advance, which Gozel thought was impossible. After all, it would take a while for Uigard to regain his powers, so until then the times of peace would last. And after the coronation, the queen asks about her father's whereabouts, which the advisor couldn't find out, since he was sure he ran away when the evil deeds of those who worked behind the scenes were exposed, and the queen admits that even though he was her father, it saddened her, so they should continue the search, after all, she couldn't waste the opportunity that Fleo gave her. So she would rebuild this kingdom at any cost and about the great hero, he kept fleeing through the holes in the hope of being recognized again, while his servant wept. But that afternoon RYS called everyone to dinner while Fleo thought that initially he came to this world alone and all he could do was try to survive. But now he had companions and a new dream and asks RYS what she thought about selling her homemade sweets when he opens a store making the girl excited, and she suggests that they also sell the cakes of Balarasa and Fleo suggests that they use the vegetables of Blossom in some of them, which RYS considered perfect, since this way they could also sell vegetable lunchboxes and recognizes that their dream was growing, and so the two enter the house with their large family, or would it be Pac? Marking the end of our first season with a questioning in the post-credit about a possible continuation. So leave your like and subscribe and don't forget to comment and share a lot to continue receiving the videos of the next season, thank you and see you next time.